I always said I wanted a husband who would wear my family tartan on our wedding day if I was going to give up my surname and that's exactly what he did. <laughs> I was fully kilted up for the wedding. I decided that since Emma was getting a new dress, I would get a new kilt. I was relatively well behaved on our wedding, although I did get a telling off from a great uncle. I was standing at the front of the uh, ballroom and just trying to compose myself. I uh, had a little bit of a swig from the hip flask. After that, I got waved over and told if I can't do it sober, I shouldn't be doing it at all. <laughs> so I, I heeded his advice and uh, avoided the hip flask for the rest of the ceremony. <laughs> I would say that we both identify as being Scottish, probably specifically as being from the North Coast and Aberdeen and Shire. So a traditional Scottish wedding usually involves around 120 people to 300 people. Back in the time when castles were built, a grand ballroom was for 60 and not for 160. So we did have to choose a castle that was more modern. Our wedding is taking place at a venue called Drumtochty Castle. The castle has 11 beautiful bedrooms inside and it can accommodate almost all of our guests on the estate. We did want a celebration that lasted at least two nights. It spreads the time to catch up with everyone and I think it looks like it takes the kind of pressure off the bride and groom on the day. We're not having the typical church wedding. Neither of us are really kind of church going type people. We chose a humanist ceremony. My mum was very, very keen that we had the full church wedding. So it took a bit of persuading that uh, we were doing the right thing. But uh, yeah, I think we've got there. Scotland is one of the few countries in the world that humanist weddings are legal. People choose to have a humanist ceremony because they get the ceremony they want. It's entirely about them. It is tailored towards them. Every ceremony I conduct contains a period of reflection, so we accept that there are people there that have faith, religious beliefs. Our ceremonies are very much inclusive. I did the traditional something old, new, borrowed and blue, so my veil was borrowed. Um, I wore a ring from my grandma that had a blue stone. My dress is the something new. The old item was a brooch that my gran had and that was on my bouquet. It's also traditional in Scotland to have a lucky sixpence on your shoe um, as you go down the aisle and Glad's parents um, have a little stash of old sixpences so they lent me a sixpence and that got stuck onto my shoe before I went down the aisle. Emotions building up uh, for me didn't probably start until I was standing at the front of the uh, at the front of the aisle. Um, everything felt great uh, until I got into the uh, ballroom and to the front of the aisle, and then the waterworks came on. I think overall I was the one who cried the least, so um, I managed to hold it together fairly well. So we decided with the Humanist Academy that we would write our own vows, or part of them. Yeah, I borrowed some of mine. I had to turn uh, to some inspiration from uh, Robbie Burns, who's uh, a Scottish poet. And I will come again, my love. Do it, we're 10,000 mile. <laughs> You've made your promises and exchanged things. And it's now my great pleasure and privilege to declare you married and as such pronounce your husband and wife. Today, in time honoured tradition, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> All of our table names were based on whiskies uh, from around Scotland. Uh, I do enjoy a dram. So over the course of maybe a year, between myself, my dad and my granddad, we collected empty whisky bottles. Something that we decided to do as favours was write a personal note to each person, thanking them for coming, just so everyone knew that we'd taken the time to really be glad that they'd, they'd come and joined in the fun with us. Traditionally in Scotland, what would happen is your guests are all called to take their seats and ask to find their places for dinner and then the bride and groom are piped in by a bagpiper into the ballroom. But I decided to um, add something into that and make that just a little bit more exuberant than normal um, and actually hired a mini pipe band. up with my dad playing piano since the day I was born. 
So we actually had two grand pianos within the building. Then we actually had him play alongside our band for the first dance. So we chose a song that had quite a lot of piano in the introduction. And that song was Tom O'Dell, Grow Old With Me. So that was really nice. So we did uh, some Kaylee dances uh, and songs throughout uh, the entertainment in the evening because we wanted to have that traditional element. A Kaylee looks like a lot of men in skirts, kicking their legs in lots of different directions, looking like they're all going to bump into each other, but miraculously not. It's really good for getting people to dance with each other that maybe don't know each other well. We cut the cake with a sword that was at the castle. Uh, I think that's quite a traditional kind of thing. I think the only difference of the Scottish wedding and weddings from anywhere else is that all the men have their spawdins on and they all have a hip flask in there with uh, something tasty to top them up if they're ever having to wait too long at the bar. Our wedding was quite a traditional Scottish wedding. We were married in a castle, we wore kilts, we danced Kayleigh. We didn't necessarily set out for our wedding to be like that, but I guess our heritage and our culture and the things that we're used to seeing um, at family weddings and around us at celebrations all found its way in there. You maybe question whether 18 months of planning is going to be worth it for one day. It's going to be good, obviously, but whether that's really worth it. But yeah, I can honestly say afterwards, hand on heart, yeah, it was uh, the best weekend of my life. Thanks for watching Worldwide Wed. Subscribe to Refinery29 to never miss an episode.